My First Bible presents The Punishment of Miriam. Two years have passed since the Israelites left Egypt. God spoke to Moses in the tabernacle and said to him, Hold a census, count all of the community of Israel by tribe and by patriarchal families, listing all their names one by one. You and Aaron will recruit men older than twenty who are fit to go to war. For this, count on the collaboration of a man from each tribe who is the head of a patriarchal family. Okay. And that is what they did. They counted each Israelite, organized them by tribe, and recruited young men for war. God had told Moses not to count Levi's tribe. He told him the Levites were in charge of the tabernacle and all its components. They would oversee transporting, assembling, and disassembling everything related to the tabernacle. They would also oversee taking care of the Sanctuary of the Covenant. Later, God explained to Moses and Aaron how the camps of each tribe of Israel would be organized and where they would be located. In the center of the campsite was the tabernacle. On the east side would be Judah's tribe, Issachar's tribe, and Zebulun's tribe. On the south side would be Reuben's tribe, Simeon's tribe, and Gad's tribe. On the north side would be Dan's tribe, Asher's tribe, and Naphtali's tribe. On the west side would be the sons of Joseph, Ephraim's and Manasseh's tribes, and next to those would be the tribe of Benjamin. Around the tabernacle is where the Levites were located. They were divided into three families. To the north was the family of Merari, to the south the family of Kohath, and on the west side the family of Gershon. These three were the sons of Levi. To the east, at the entrance to the tabernacle, were Moses, Aaron, and the priests. The cloud lifted from the tabernacle. It was time to leave Sinai. When the Israelite people set out, they packed everything and organized themselves by tribe. In front of them all was the Ark of the Covenant, which was carried by the Levites as God had asked. They were heading for the desert of Paran. One day, on the way, the people complained again about their hardships. God listened to the complaints. He became angry with them, and his fire consumed the surroundings of the camp. Then the people cried out to Moses. He prayed to God for them, and the fire went out. That is why that place became known as Taborah, where the fire of God burned among them. On the third day of the journey, the foreign people who had mixed in with the Israelites had a great desire for food. The Israelites also complained and whispered again. They said, Oh, how delicious it was to eat meat! Do you remember when we ate fish for free in Egypt? And everybody sighed. Oh. Yes, that's true. And like that, everyone began to talk against Moses. They were tired of eating manna. Do you all remember the melons? And the cucumbers and leeks? And the onions and garlic? Moses heard the families complaining, and so, very unhappy, Moses prayed to God. O oh Lord, if I am your servant, why do you harm me? Why do you deny me your favor and force me to care for all these people? Am I like their mother? 
in the way that you demand that I take care of them and take them to the land that you promised their ancestors? I just can't take it with these people. It's too heavy a burden for me. If this is the deal you're going to give me, you'd be doing me a favor if you take my life. That way, I would be free from my misfortune. And God responded to him, Bring me 70 elders of Israel. I will share with them the spirit that is upon you, so that they can help you carry the burden that you have with these people. That way, you won't have to carry it alone. And to the people, you will say the following. Moses listened attentively to what God told him and shared with the people. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, for you are going to eat meat. All of you who were complaining to the Lord, saying that you wanted meat and that you had a better time in Egypt, God will give you meat and you will have to eat it. You won't eat it for one day, not two, not ten, but a whole month until it makes you nauseous. And this is because you haven't appreciated God who is in your midst and for crying, saying you would rather be in Egypt. The next morning, God caused quail to fall again. But this time, there were many more than the last time. And they all began to eat, to eat and eat. They ate so much that many died of gluttony. That is why they call that place Kibroth Hateava, because the gluttonous people were buried there. Then the people set out for Hazaroth, and they camped there. While in that land, Miriam and Aaron began to speak against their brother Moses because of his wife. Miriam said, Moses is married to a woman who is not even an Israelite. Do you think that's okay? Also, hasn't God spoken to someone other than Moses? God has spoken to us too. God heard everything they said. God knew that Moses was a very humble man, humbler than anyone else on earth. So he told Moses, Aaron and Miriam to gather in the tabernacle. Hey! Then God descended in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance to the tent. Aaron, Miriam, God called them and they stepped closer. Listen to my words. If there were a prophet among you, I, the Lord, would speak to him in visions, and I would speak to him in dreams. However, this does not happen with my servant Moses, who has always been faithful to me. With him, I speak face to face, clearly and without enigmas. He sees how I am. How could you speak without fear against my servant Moses? anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and then he departed. As soon as the cloud moved away from the tabernacle, Miriam's skin turned as white as snow. Miriam. When Aaron looked at her, he saw that she had an infectious disease. She had leprosy. Oh my God. So Aaron pleaded with Moses. I'm begging you, Moses, do not hold us accountable for this sin that we have so foolishly committed. Do not allow this evil against Miriam. Blah, 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 blah. Moses begged God, Oh God, have mercy. I beg you to please heal her. And God answered him, If your father had spit on your sister's face, wouldn't she feel ashamed? Well, let her be removed from the camp for seven days. Then she can come back. Moses told them what God had said to him. So Miriam had to stay outside the camp for seven days. The Israelite people did not move until she returned. 
When the seven days were up, Miriam came back completely healthy. The three siblings were happy to be together again and hugged each other. With this, they learned a valuable lesson. That speaking against others is not right and does not please God. Comment and subscribe below.